This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring defense attorney, Hidden Killers daily contributor, and host of the Defense Diaries podcast, Bob Motta. McClelland, uh, the prosecutor, filed a motion to withdraw his most recent request for Richard Allen's mental health records after pushing for them for a little bit of time. Uh, why? Why suddenly it's like, oh, I don't need those. I'm good. Yeah, it's... Uh, ask it again, man. I was spacing out. No. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, no. McClelland has filed the motion to withdraw his most recent request for Richard Allen's mental health records. Uh, I, the question is why? Because he was pushing for it for quite some time, and all of a sudden it's like, eh, I don't need those now that we're getting... I mean, it, it, it seemed to kind of coincide with the fact that we have a date for the trial. He's suddenly like, I'm good. I don't need those. <clears throat> Uh, no, what the actual reason was is that uh, he made a, a grievous error in that he cited in his third motion for uh, Richard Allen's uh, mental health records yeah. um, a ex parte uh, motion that was filed by the defense seeking funds for uh, various experts. And ex parte, uh, that means that the other side cannot see it. Okay, ah. so so he, he he cited, so he made this admission in in his pleading that he had read it, and, and not only did he read it, but he put the the perspective expert that the defense was going to hire as far as a forensic psychologist to deal with the uh, jailhouse confessions, uh, put her in the pleading itself and she hadn't even been retained. So the defense was obviously upset, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then he filed something a couple days later stating that, Oh, uh, oops, I, I shouldn't have read that. Uh, it was filed as public, which it wasn't the, just the, the defense verified, uh, through the, the filing system that it was not filed public. It was sealed. Um, and, then how did he know, get it? That's the million dollar question. That is the million dollar question. Um, I mean, that pretty much verifies that like the, the, the cards are very much tilted in his direction of, Hey, you get it from, and, and he's so s stupid or inexperienced that he's f making public <laughs> filings <laughs> on stuff. He shouldn't even technically be seeing. I mean, what the hell? He, he absolutely should not have seen it. You know, I mean, like that was like his entire I'm withdrawing that motion was like a mea culpa. But then, he, of course, he tried to blame it on the defense, saying that they filed it publicly. The defense, of course, responded in writing, saying, no, not true. So, uh, yeah, it, it's the whole the whole case, man, uh, is just a mess, you know, and it's like. I, I was relieved that they had filed the 70 day. I, I think you and I were talking about it. I, I didn't know what their position would be with respect to, to doing that just because of all the, the bullshit that's going on with the case in yeah. terms of, can they be ready? Uh, you know, but, but once they filed it, you know, it, it really changed the dynamic in a lot of different ways. Sure. You know what I mean? And so, um, I mean, you know, the other thing that, that we should probably discuss is the fact that, you know, we've got this hearing coming up on Monday mm -hmm. and it's actually two hearings. Uh, there's the, the motion for contempt against the lawyers mm -hmm. rehashing the same things, the exact same things that were already discussed and litigated in front of the Indiana Supreme court, yeah. the Indiana Supreme court as a result, of course, reinstated them. Uh, he saw fit to, decide to to spend his precious little time that he has left as we're 59 days away from trial preparing for a thing that doesn't matter the supreme court all. already gave their that what they decided on that it's done it's, it, yeah. it's done and, and you know it's like i don't see what his end game is in in again when we're talking about a prosecutor's office that does not have the resources and and uh, you know, just bodies to be able to help him to prepare. It's a very odd choice. Yeah. You know, for those that are, uh, you know, on the side of Alan's guilty, uh, or for all of us that are on the side of, we want justice for the girls. 
it, it's a it, it's disconcerting because he's choosing to spend his time on something that really is ancillary, mm-hmm. has has no bearing or impact on the trial itself, and, and frankly can wait. I mean, if he wants to bring this, bring it after the trial. Yeah, you know, I mean, like all of this stuff can wait until after <clears throat> trial, you know, and and then you know if Gull's gonna punish him, then she can punish him then. Yeah, it doesn't have to be done now. So. To me, tactically, he's making a, a, like a massive mistake by ways because he's got to be preparing for this. Yeah, you know, the defense hired, you know, an old war horse criminal defense attorney, Dave Hennessy, who you know is an Indianapolis guy and who's won a hundred murder trials, and he's he's handling all of it while the two attorneys are preparing for trial. Yeah, you know, so it's just when you look at it objectively. Uh, no matter where you fall on this, it, it it has to give you concern, especially in light of the underlying case and, and trying to get to the truth, you know? So yeah. it's a strange, strange decision on his part. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.